This company's had three CEOs. They're all right here. This is all. One, two, three. There they are. Bill Gates introduced the new CEO of Microsoft more than three years ago. His name is Satya Nadella. He's become the company's third CEO in 2014 after working at Microsoft for 22 years. Since then, he has generated $250 billion with a B in market value for Microsoft. He discusses his personal and professional journey of transforming the company. In his new book, it's called Hit Refresh, a quest to rediscover Microsoft's soul and imagine a better future for everyone. Bill Gates writes in the foreword, we have fallen behind Google and have a fly in our own uh, studio. Our original search team has moved on. Satya was part of the group that came in to turn things around. He was humble, forward-looking, and pragmatic. We welcome Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella to the table. Welcome and good morning. Thank you so much. And um, to change a culture is not easy. How do you do it? And what are you looking to create? You know, when a company is successful, one of the things that happens is the concept that got you started in the first place, the capability that you have and the culture all get into this beautiful, virtuous lock and things are going well. Then lo and behold, you need to come up with a new concept, a new idea for which you need new capability. That's when the culture has to be at its premium. In other words, the culture needs to enable you to come up with new ideas, build new capabilities. So that's why I think for companies to be successful over a long period of time, you need more than a good idea and a good strategy. You need a culture that fosters that growth. And the capacity to refresh all the time. That's correct. I mean, the, the fact that everything that starts off and goes into hyper growth ultimately does taper off. The real question is, what do you do when that happens? How do you hit refresh is sort of, I think, the real challenge for us as individuals as, as companies or us as societies. And so you said one of the things that starts with you, and for you it meant empathy, which I think is such a great concept. Jeff Weiner, who you all are together, I love that, I think it's a great bromance between the two of you. Yeah. Both talk about empathy a lot, and I think that that's so important. And you cite in your book two really strong examples of how your life was changed by empathy and what, how it carries with you today. Yeah, I mean, first of all, I think empathy is everything. If you think about even in the business context for us, right, our job is to meet the unmet, unarticulated needs of customers. That's where innovation comes from. There's no way we could innovate without having that deeper sense of empathy. So what happened to you? To me, you, you know, the first, uh, which I write in the book is the interview, my interview at Microsoft, the last, the very last question. The last interviewer asked me is, what would you do if there was a child who had fallen on the road? Uh, I sort of thought about it for a few seconds. I thought there was some algorithm there. And then I said, I'll call 911. So the interviewer just walks up and leaves. And I thought I'd blown the interview because he then tells me, look, when a child is on the ground and crying, you pick them up and hug them. Yes. Uh, that was my first big lesson yeah. on empathy. Yeah, and it changed your life. Absolutely. I mean, I reflected on it quite a bit. I mean, and that's the other point, which is it's not some innate capability. I believe that your life's experiences will teach you if you listen. Uh, and at least in my case, that's what, whether it was that interview question, the birth of my son, uh, and every day at Microsoft, I learn uh, about building a deeper insight to be able to see through others' yeah, eyes. You're right that your son has severe cer cerebral palsy. That's right, yeah. He, he was born uh, you know, 21 years ago with uh, a in utero uh, asphyxiation, which led to cerebral palsy. Uh, and his birth in the initial phase for us, uh, at least for me, was more about, like, why did this happen to me? But it was only through watching my wife, uh, for whom much, it came much more naturally to care for him, mm -hmm. that I realized nothing happened to me, something happened to him, and what my job was as a father. And that realization, perhaps more than anything else, shaped my outlook uh, in the years to come. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting, because Microsoft, you think about Microsoft being a leader in innovation. And you write in the book that in the smartphone era, that Microsoft had failed to lead and barely managed to participate. And then you say CE, the C in CEO is for culture. How does culture change innovation? I mean, it, the, to me, for a company that is successful, 
uh, and to be continue to be successful in something like uh, high tech for a long time, uh, you're going to have your hits and misses. Uh, if I look back, you know, 43 years ago when the company got started to here we are uh, competing with a whole set of new competitors. Uh, at every given point in time, the question is, have you caught enough waves, even if you missed one or two? That's the real question. And that's where the culture, I think, helps. Yeah. Uh, if you have a culture that allows you to learn from your mistakes mm -hmm. and still grow, mm -hmm. uh, then you are uh, doing something right. That fly on your glasses, I know, is very important. <laughs> <interesting. laughs> Here, take your off your glasses, Satya, so you can get rid of it. You talk about when you wanted to get to your employees, you said that the morale was low, that the people felt they had lost their cool factor. You have a Pacific call at 602, so you can talk to everybody, and you want them to know what? This is I what mean, we're going to do. To me, it was not as much about, oh, we had lost our cool factor or rue any of the misses, uh, misses we had. It was more about being... Uh, in touch with our core sense of purpose and identity. If you look at it, right, Microsoft's different from a lot of other companies yeah. in the sense our first product was the basic interpreter for the Altair. That's what Paul and Bill created. Mm -hmm. And that what te it telegraphs for me is that we create technology so that others can create more technology. Mm -hmm. That's who we are. We are the tool maker. And in a world right today where every walk of life and every industry is being shaped by digital technology, mm -hmm. our original thesis is even more important. And I wanted to be in touch with it. Technology is so powerful, but also the success of tech companies has made them very powerful. And there is much conversation today about putting them under very, very strict scrutiny. Are you worried about that? I think that any company that has done well has uh, a significant footprint, uh, especially multinationally. I think it's super important for us to think about the surplus we create around us. Uh, I think When I think about Microsoft, one of the things that gives me the greatest pride, whether I'm in New York area or I'm in any part of the world, is the small businesses that are more productive the large businesses that have become more competitive, the public sector that's more efficient, the educational outcomes that are better because of the work we do. Unless and until we measure ourselves with the outcomes mm -hmm. outside of our own exactly. balance sheet, uh, I think there's no long-term success in business. So it's incumbent on you to take a look at what the consequences are to technological development. Absolutely, and especially how broad spread is the success around you because of your innovation. Without that, I think the equation is not balanced. Well, third CEO, Bill Gates, Steve Ballmer, and now you. Congratulations. Thank you so much, Gail. Satya Nadella, thank you so much. And Hit Refresh is on sale today.